So welcome everyone. Thank you all for joining me today. We are going to be diving into command and taking a look at how it can improve your social media presence for your business page today. And when we go through command, there's a lot of support for you to do this in terms of content and getting it onto your page that you're not trying to do it uh, the day of. And so today we're going to go through a couple different designs. First, uh, we're going to look at a Facebook header. I find that a lot of agents are asking me about that right now, of how to update your Facebook header and how command can help. We're going to look at some holiday designs and schedule those out. Um, and then we're also going to talk about a story post and linking that into or getting a link for from your website so that you can send people to that website and send people to your app. Now, a lot of the stuff that we're going to go over today is really universal for a lot of different ideas. This isn't the only way to implement some of the strategies that we talk about. So just keep that in mind uh, when you're kind of cruising through the design features in command and when you're watching today. Um, but you guys should be looking at my website. Is everybody seeing my website right now that says find your dream home? Perfect. All right. So we are gonna start inside of command. And Today, like I said, we're gonna go into designs and designs is gonna be our paintbrush over on the left side of the screen. So if we click on the red KW, just for anybody who's a little new, that opens up that tray. So if you're kind of new to learning the symbols, it makes it a little easier to find the applet that you wanna get into. And if you want it to go away, we click it again, but we're gonna go into that paintbrush. Um, this is also a good time to remind everyone you should be using Google Chrome. Uh, when you are using command, it runs best in Google Chrome. It was built to run in Google Chrome. Designs especially runs best in Google Chrome. You get some funny stuff going on if you start using this in uh, some different browsers. So just keep that in mind. If you're ever having a weird issue, make sure you're in Chrome uh, before you reach out, because that's usually the first thing I'm going to ask you is, are you using Google Chrome? Teresa, do you have a question? Where's the paintbrush again? Over on the left side, it's a little box, third from the bottom. Oh, gotcha, okay, thank you. All right, I appreciate your questions. If anybody does have questions, feel free to jump in. Don't mind at all uh, to be interrupted. It is just fine with me on Zoom. It is hard enough already to do this education through all of this, so don't be shy. Also, I will be monitoring the chat just uh, off to the side. So if I do see questions come in there, I'm happy to answer them in there. And I might even be asking you guys questions in there. Just so be aware. I don't mind if your screen's off, but if I do ask for some responses, I appreciate them greatly. All right. So let's jump in. We're going to start off by clicking on create design. And today we're focused on some social media stuff. So we're going to click on the social uh, option here. That means all the templates that we're going to see are all built for different online platforms and social media. The print options are meant for printing, so things that you would see in normal printing sizes. Uh, but today we're just gonna work in social and hit continue. And we're gonna be dropped into our different templates that we have. And there are hundreds of templates in here for you to use um, for your business. And we're gonna talk about a few of them today but this is one of those places where you can really see all the different ways to implement some of the strategies uh, that we're going to talk about today. I love the listings folder. These are some that you can utilize every single week of your business, utilizing just listed, just sold, getting permission from other agents if you don't have any just solds. Uh, but closings are closings, buyers, sellers, just solds, lots of different stuff. And we're going to make a neighborhood snap later. Uh, but we're going to start off by coming down to business basics over on the left side. And like I said, I see a lot of agents asking about the their Facebook cover photo. And if you don't know what I mean by that, that's the one at the top of your business page. Uh, that's that real uh, wide photo at the top that you can change out and put different things up there. And we have some different templates inside here to help you brand yourself. And that's under the social branding option in Business Basics. And so we have three different sizes. They are slightly different in their pixel sizes for uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook. And we're just gonna talk about some Facebook covers today. And so in here, we have different templates and don't, besides the ones that are red and a little bit more cartoony and not real pictures, 
you want to focus more on what the template looks like in general because we can change the fonts we can change the colors we can change the pictures of all of these and so try and focus more in on what the design looks like because we can change a lot of the pieces of it if there's say you don't like the red bar uh on this one in the center and you want it to be blue well we can change things like that and so try and pick a design you like we're going to keep it really simple with the welcome home design i love this one for facebook uh, or just putting on a page, it just is a really welcoming uh, template that I like. It's simple, doesn't really require much in here. But we are going to customize it a little bit using some of the additional tools inside of the designer. And, and so just a quick overview. Over on the left, we have uh, different tabs that are going to give us different design options. Usually, we it's pretty explanatory of what we're going into. We're going to see the KWLS in action later elements you're not going to really need to use and then but logos texts and images are all going to come into play in a lot of these different designs but like i said we're going to keep it simple to start and so i want to replace the photo in the background where you see the two people sitting on the windowsill and we're going to replace that photo with another stock image like this just to add a little bit of uh, uniqueness to our page. And so if I want to change a photo, I'll click on that photo. And you'll see that when I do that blue box appears around the photo, telling me that it's selected. And now I'm going to actually go into our system where we have a bunch of these different stock photos. And so over to the left, I'm already on the images tab. So I'm going to click on workspace. And inside workspace, we have these different folders where you can, here we go. Uh, we have these different folders where you can go in and see all kinds of different photos. And this one, I believe comes from the lifestyles at home folder. And so let's just find another photo from that one. And so you can see very similar, we have some agent based ones in here where you have agents handing over keys and all kinds of really just different stuff that you can utilize uh, for your page. And so we're gonna just pick out one of these and you can see as I hover over the photos, I get three different options for that photo. Use the image, replace image, or use as background. And we're going to replace the image when I find one that I like. Let's go with this one. This is nice. So when I replace the image, I can see it puts the image inside that blue frame. But I'm kind of cutting off the, the parent's head there that's pushing the box or both parents' heads. And so at the top, I have five different options for this picture to change things about it. Reposition, filters, kind of like your filters on your phone that you can put over pictures, your opacity, how, how much shows up. We can use it as the background. And we also have this remove image background option, which is handy for like some logos and stuff this can be handy for. But we're gonna click on reposition and that allows us to change where the or where the photo is inside the frame. So I can just put the kids in there or I can really go down and get that whole image. I'm gonna just bring off the top there and click on done. And you can see now the parents are inside the image and everything is, is centered the way I want it to be. So I wanna give it a little change. I'm gonna reposition again, make it a little bit larger so I can just slide him over a bit so they're not quite off the center. There we go. And now we can fully see the kids without the word home being covering them up. And so my photo I've edited, I'm happy with that. And now I just wanna put in my, my DBA logo or doing business at logo that we need uh, on our pages. This just helps us clearly be compliant uh, on Facebook. So you can see when I clicked on that, uh, that logo, I'm gonna do it one more time. We were over in images. When I click on the logo, it actually switches me over to logos right over there. And you can load in your logos in the asset menu, which I'll show you guys uh, when we finish this design. But your asset menu will load up all of these all the time. So you can always have different uh, logos in here. You should already have your DBA logo in here when if you are part of downtown or Advantage. And so I'm gonna just toss in my logo here from downtown using the same process. I hover over the photo, then I'm gonna click the two arrows in the circle, the replace logo button. 
and it's a little off. So I'm just going to click the up arrow on my keyboard and I can keep it in the same position. It looks like it might be a little bit big uh, for this design. So I'm just going to raise it up and grab the top right corner and drag it down just to resize it down a little bit. Now the Keller Williams downtown logo has the uh, each office is independently owned and operated text at the very bottom of it. It's pretty small. And so I am going to leave the text over here because it's a little bit more legible. I'm just going to bring it up a little bit. Mm, yeah, I'll bring it down. There we go. And so now we have just a basic image that we can save to our Facebook page. Um, good practice is always to change our title here. So we're going to call it Facebook cover photo winter 22. And after I click out of there, I get the green message that it saved. And now I can click on download. Now for Facebook, I usually just use a JPEG image. Works well, keeps the image quality high enough for Facebook and on most people's phones, it's gonna be just fine. And so we just leave all the options the same and click download. You do need to wait here for a moment usually. You can't just jump out of the screen as soon as you click on download. Sometimes it does take a minute, so just be aware of that. Uh, wait until you actually see that file drop down or uh, you get the indicator on your computer that says that you've downloaded the file. Just wait until that happens and you'll be good. Are there any questions about the design so far or the photos, the photo bank, the templates, any questions so far? All right. Now, does any, would anybody like to see how to put this onto your Facebook page? Yeah, that'd be helpful. Awesome. Let me jump into my Facebook page then. All right, so if you wanted to now put this onto your Facebook page, we just go to facebook.com and then you're going to find your business page. And so me, I have mine in a shortcut over on the left side of my screen. So I'm just gonna click on Delicio's Property Services at KW Downtown. And the image that we're talking about is this one right up here. And so if I wanna change it uh, on my page, if you are the owner of that page, you'll just see the edit button in the corner there. And when you click on edit, you're going to click upload photo. And I can go down to my downloads and find that Facebook cover photo. There it is. Hit open. And save changes. That's it. Easy as that. All right. So designing a Facebook header. That's an easy one. I really only change mine maybe two, three times a year. Sometimes it's seasonal. Um, also be aware, you don't have to use the stock photos. I just worked with an agent before this meeting where she had pictures of mountains and she works out in the mountains. And so she had a great mountainscape and we put it into a template just like that. It had the, uh, It was similar to the one I was using and she changed it around, put her logo in and it looks great. And so you can also use your own photos. You don't have to just use the stock photos from Keller Williams that they provide. All right, so let's go back into the template. So if I'm starting off on the page that you're looking at, I can just click on the home button and it'll bring me back to that templates page. But I always think it's helpful to see everything done again. So let's click on done and it'll bring us back into command. And so now we're on the design screen still. So still in the paintbrush over on the left side, uh, you see all my different designs in here. And now let's let's take a look and create a, a design that we're gonna actually post in the future. So we're gonna just grab a couple of holiday designs from the templates and just create something simple that we can post out and have it ready and it'll send out on its own uh, in the future so we don't have to worry about this. And again, you can use this for any holidays, or you can use it for, I encourage you to use it for all your posts, um, just to make it easier and to create a little model for your, or a system for your business. So we're gonna do the same thing. I'm in designs. I'm gonna come up to the top right corner and click on create design, and then social one more time and continue. And so the next big holiday next month, or maybe it's at the end of this month, uh, depends on the time, I guess. 
uh, is New Year's. I think that's an easy one to start with that you can give yourself a nice post to start the year off with. And so if we want to make any kind of holiday post, no matter what month it is, we just come down to this holidays folder. And inside there, you can see all the different months and they're all broken down uh, by month so that you can see the different holidays inside them. Um, we can let's just look at December because this one's pretty filled, pretty filled up. Uh, we can see our different filters at the top. So if we're looking to do like a social story, we would click on social stories. Those are the taller ones that are meant to be kind of looking like a phone that is straight up and down. We also have the social square, which if you don't know what to use, use the square. That's an easy, it will look good on Instagram. It'll look good on Facebook. It'll look good in emails. It's a great template to use. It's just very universal. And then of course we have the wider one that is more based for uh, Facebook timelines. You'll see a lot of the same designs in each one. Uh, but like I said, I usually go in with the social square and that's what we're gonna use today. Um, and I'm actually going to go into January and we're going to do a little happy new year post. And so let's go over to social square one more time. And we see, we have some Martin Luther King day, uh, ones that we could plan out, but we're going to do the first holiday and we're going to do the happy new year one. So when I hover over this, I get that option to click use in the top right corner of the thumbnail. And so I'll just click on that. And you'll see it'll drop us right into a very similar designer that we saw before. You see my, my assets show up on the left side and we get a lot of the same options in here. And this one is a really simple template. We don't really need to do much with it, but we can if we'd like to. And so let's play around a little first. Uh, first by changing the background color, because I can tell you I'm not crazy about the one it is now. And all I have to do to do uh, change a color is click on the element that I want to change the color of, and you'll see at the top a little circle of that color. When I click on that circle, it gives me all these different colors. If you have some of your own colors already put in there, some different templates that you can save into your assets, like you see here. Oh, I think those are blank. Uh, or you can use different template colors that are coming uh, these are just basic ones that come in all the templates that it is the default, or you can find a custom color down here, type it in down here, use the dropper, lots of options. But let's just pick a different color. Let's maybe go with, oh, that's a bright red. Let's see what it looks like. Too bright. Try a different one. Um, let's go with the light. There we go. That looks okay. I'm not crazy about the font color. So the same thing, if we want to change the color of something, we click on the element we want to change. At the top, we'll usually see a color that it is. And then I can just choose that color and make the change. So we're just going to change that to black. And we'll change the bottom one down there to black as well. Now, I want to make these a little bigger. So I can click on the element and I can change the font up here at the top and switch it out to something larger. I can also just do it, I can eyeball it by clicking on one of these corners that is a circle. You don't wanna click on the ovals on the sides, you wanna click in the circle and I can expand my New Year's out, make it a little bit bigger. Now you should, it might be hard to see, but I'm trying to show them off as much as I can, but there's some blue lines that show up as I hover this around. I'm holding my mouse button down and, and dragging this around. But those are guidelines that you can see this one keeps me nice and center in the design. And so utilize those when, when you're making changes to help keep your design nice and aligned. It just makes it easier for people's eyes. And we're gonna just do the same thing. Now, what I like to do is if I change a font size, uh, when I'm eyeballing it, I can then look up here and see that it's just about 90. So I'm gonna change it to 90. And then instead of eyeballing the other ones, I'm just going to click and change each of them the same you just saw me do. And just type in 90 in there and hit enter. Oh, oh I messed up my years, which is something that will happen to you when you're designing that. You see now years is on two lines as one word, and I don't like that. But you might have heard me mention those ovals on the side of the design on the right and left side. And those are going to change how wide the field of text is. So you can see it's too short of a field to fit the full word years in that uh, space. And so we have to just drag that out. But you'll notice when we click on the oval, the font size does not change. It just makes that 
length of the field longer so that we can fit our design inside the box that we're using. And it does not change the font. So be careful when you're editing your text boxes because you have to know the difference between the circle, changing the size of the actual uh, font and the size of the letters or the field where it's the oval that changes the length of the field or the size of the field. And so now that looks good to me. And I'm gonna bring that right back in and try and get it nice and centered to the exact center of the image and do the same for the word day. And so we'll come in, change the font up to 90, hit enter. Oh, looks like we need to change that one as well. So I'll drag that oval off to the side and now drag the word day down in a little bit lower. There we go. And so if you'd like different colors, you can change those around. You can be really creative with these. If you get into it, you can click on these tiny elements like this little white star. I can click on the white star. And if I wanna make that a different color, I can go in there and really customize this if I wanted to, or you can just leave it the way it is. I'm a big fan of letting the designers be the professionals and not changing much. The only thing I'm gonna do now is just make it so it is compliant. So I'm gonna add my logo for my uh, business. And then I'm also gonna put in my personal logo for my, for my business, not just my brokerage logo. So same thing, I'll click on that DBA name image down at the bottom. It automatically jumps me over to my logos. Let's go to my Keller Williams Advantage ones for this one and hit the, oh no, I'm gonna post this, so I gotta keep it compliant. And so I'm just gonna replace that. Uh, you can hit the up arrow key. If you hold shift and up at the same time, you can see it jumps up a little bit faster. And that looks good there. And now I wanna just put in my own logo. So my logo that I'm gonna use is actually in my elements. It's just a, a smaller kind of photo. And we're gonna use this white one, make it smaller and put it down here in the corner. And that's it. Last thing to do here is change the name. So we're gonna say, Happy New Year 2022. And then I'll do the same thing by downloading this fold or this file. And we wait just a moment, it's preparing, it's preparing. We can see it at the top, it downloaded. And now we have the file in my device so that I can utilize it anywhere I want. I can send it over to my cell phone. I can send it to my tablet and then post it that way onto my Facebook. There's lots of ways to go, but we also have a way to go inside of command. But before I go into that, are there any questions about any of the newer design or the different design elements that I went over uh, for this design? Any new questions pop up in the last couple minutes? All right, well, we downloaded our design and, oh, before we go in there, let's click over to home. And when I click on home off of this page, it brings me back into that template page. And I wanted to just quickly show you guys uh, one more screen. So you're looking at my designs. This is all my different designs. Here's our templates that we were in before. So you see there's three different tabs up here. They're all pretty useful tabs. You might have noticed that in these designs, I have folders that I can organize things in. I don't get that in command. Uh, so I, I like using this page quite a bit when you start getting really bombarded with the designs, like you see my, uh, my command is too many. And so folders are really helpful at this point. There's also some start from blank options here. So you can create custom ones, you can import PDFs. But the third tab at the top is the one that you probably all need to go pay a little attention to. So let's click on assets. And this is where you can see some of that stuff that shows up that you saw before uh, that was, I was talking about calling them my assets. So here's that color palette. Here's the different images that you saw show up on each design. So I can save them in here and have them show up each time. So having some headshots in there, I have a couple different backgrounds I use a lot uh, for different purposes. So anything that you use all the time, you can put in here. So you have it available in every single design. Now you can always just upload something one at a time, but it's only available in that one design when you do that. It's not gonna save it somewhere that it, uh, well, it kind of does, but it's a pain to get to. And so this one, 
putting these images in here makes it really easy to customize your designs because command is it, all those templates are really built around having like a headshot and some different information there. Tony, I see you raised your hand. What's up? Yeah, I had a question about logos. Um, so when we came on, Cheryl like emailed us like all of our, you know, our uh, downtown logos and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I can't, I can't upload them on there because it's asking for a specific type of file that I don't know how to make it into that file. And so okay. I'm just wondering how we can upload all the different ones in there. Um, send me an email and I will send okay. over a handful of, of some logos. I don't think I have the black ones that you see on the screen right now, um, but you're okay. in downtown, right, Tony? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yes. Send me an email and I will kick over some that you should be able to upload with no problem. I think the ones that Cheryl sends are sometimes in PDF form and it doesn't want PDFs in here. It will only take JPEGs. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? So as Tony said, you see, we have these different logos that that's how you get the logos to show up for yourself as well. You can see we can use folders in here, which is really handy to organize things uh, as well, especially if you're if you have different logos for um, maybe affiliations and things that you have with lenders and there's other other things that you might put in there. Like I said, the elements are just an additional file uh, type that you can upload that are generally just smaller style files that are called SVG. If you run into an SVG file, I'd be surprised if you do. This is where you can upload them. In the videos and file section, you can put stuff in here, but there is no function as of now. Um, so I don't think you need to worry about it, but assets, a good, good place to go spend some time, upload some photos. Oh, text. I wanted to talk about text. So in, in here, text works this, uh, you want to think about this text as the same way that when we replace that picture by clicking on the picture and then clicking that replace image option, well, we can do the same thing with text and it's really handy to have things like Denver, Colorado, and your phone number, your email, those different pieces, your, your website. You want those different pieces because a lot of those show up on designs. And then you can just click on those, you can click on those bodies of text and then just replace them with the appropriate pieces like your phone number or your name. And so it's really handy to save those different things in there. Uh, even, even saving simple stuff. So just like my first name is a handy one to have in there because sometimes it separates your name into two different text boxes. So it's handy to have a first name. We click new field, let's do a last name. And so now I can individually just replace those in without having to type my actual uh, name in there, which is handy because it just makes it a little bit faster when you're designing stuff. All right. Any questions about the asset menu? Excellent. So we designed a Facebook header. We made a quick holiday design for New Year's. Now let's go in and post this to our business page so it posts on New Year's Day. And to do that, we need to create a campaign. So we'll go over here to the megaphone. That's our, our campaigns applet. And at the top, you'll see a couple of different tabs, or not a couple, but a five different tabs. And the last one at the top is social posts. And so let's just take a look in this menu here. You can see I already have a post scheduled for this week. Anything you have going on this week shows up in the, the week of. We can also see that week of scheduled out at the top, and we can also see it in a month view, which is really a handy, handy view to have so that when you start scheduling these out for your business, you can see them repeatedly showing up. It's also based on time, so you can be really specific. You can do multiple posts a day. There are a lot of ways uh, to utilize this. As I scroll down, you can see over on the right side, we have some different quick posts that Keller Williams builds for us. And so you'll see these social posts in here, 
where the photos and the text is already written for you. And you can just shuffle through some of these if you don't like what you see. The text you can shuffle through in the design, but these are really handy to just come in, click on the arrow, not having to think too much about it. It loads in a photo, it gives me text. If I'm not crazy about this text, I might say, okay, let's, let's do this bad joke alert one instead, or click shuffle again and maybe do the pop quiz one. But all I have to do is just, it's already done for me. So I come in, schedule a post, I can have that schedule out. Maybe I'll have it go out. Uh, I already have one for tomorrow, so let's do Friday. And if you have multiple Facebook pages, you can post to multiple. I'm just gonna keep it at my own page, but that's it. We can quickly do posts like this where you can hit maybe uh, every Thursday in a month with these social posts really quickly and just schedule out those posts so that you have something going into your business page. And it's, you know, we can't really get much connection into our personal side of our Facebook pages, um, but it would be your job then to go in and share it to your personal page to try and get that traction and engagement from the Facebook side if your business page is a newer one. Sharing it over to your personal page, every single post, liking it, having your, you know, I'll tell you straight up every one of my posts, my mom likes every single one. And it's because I told her to like two years ago and it helps every little bit helps. And so if you got those people in your corner, ask them to make sure they're sharing and liking your posts as well. All right, so let's build out the custom post that we're gonna do with the post that we just did. And so what we're gonna go up to now is create campaign in the top right hand corner. And here we have all the different campaigns we can do, social ad paid. That's when you actually pay Facebook to run ads to people you don't know. We're looking for social posts. We don't have to pay anything for this and it just goes on to our business page. So in here we have text that we can, we can type in. I'm gonna click on this. We, sometimes we get, we have to, load in our image early. So I'm going to just start with the image and I suggest just come down here, click on browse design library and click on the template that you used. We did download it, but this, I like using this way because I don't have to download it if I don't need to, but sometimes I get an error that says you have to wait. Oh no, go ahead, Teresa. I hope everything is okay. All right. And I got my error and that error just says, hey, you need to wait. So if I have to wait, I just type in my text now. And so we're gonna put in happy new year. And another cool trick that you might find useful is if you wanna put emojis into your post, you can come down here and click on the little smiley face and it'll bring up a menu so that you can click your click on the emoji you want. Just know it's always gonna drop that emoji at the end of the line of text. Even if I clicked between new and year, if I add in an emoji, it drops it at the end of the, uh, at the, end of the text line. What you can also do is click, uh, if you type a colon, you'll see that we get this menu pop up. So if I type in colon and start typing champagne without a space in between the colon, you'll see it pops up with a bunch of different uh, emojis that fit that search. And so I can do champagne, let's do balloon, balloon, and let's do party. Let's, uh, there's only one R in party to party. Oh, ta-da, that's what it's called. Happy New Year, we made it. All right, so we have that. Let's see if our design is ready. There it is in the corner. Let's see if it's happy with it now. Looks good. It suggests the square, uh, the square crop, which is perfect for what we're using because we used a square image. So we can just, we don't have to change anything. We can just hit crop image. And there it is over on the right side. Uh, just notice in here, you can do videos here. You can do links as well. So other ways to utilize this that we're not showing off today. And of course, if we don't design or browse the design library, that's for some reason what you just saw me do isn't working. Uh, just click on upload image, and then we can upload it straight from our computer where it's going to search our device. We can click on it right in our device. And then it looks very similar as what you just saw after that.
And so it does add in my DBA logo, but since we put it into the design, I'm going to click the X on here so it doesn't include it since I already did. I can include my ownership statement as well. Each office is independently owned and operated, and you can see it puts that in. You might be able to see it. Uh, very faintly puts it in at the bottom of the screen. My downtown logo is a little, a little hard to read there, and so I'm going to leave that in and just uh, make sure to hit apply. Just gives it down at the bottom. Uh, I like to make sure I'm compliant, so I don't mind being a little extra about it. I'm going to just close or X out of one of those to, so I don't post two pictures on the same uh, post. But then I'm going to just last step is figure out my date. And this one I just want to post on the morning of January 1st. And so I choose the first at the top and then I can come down here and choose my time. So I'm going to do it at 8 a.m. So hopefully people will see it when they are waking up hungover or whatever it is going to the gym. They'll see my post. All right. And then the last step is just to hit schedule post. Uh Oh, it didn't like something. Once my DBA. Ooh, that's all right. I'll put it in there just so we can pass through here. Let's see, that's here. There we go. All right, let's schedule that post. And that's it. Now, this is something you can do at the beginning of each week and fill out each week. You could do it at the beginning of each month, at the beginning of each quarter. It's really up to you of how much content you want to create up front. Uh, but it's a really useful piece of command that you can just go in and, and create a quick design. I really recommend um, using, using like the just listed and just sold, picking a template that you like and using it over and over again. And so... Let's just take a look at some of those templates of what I mean. So I'm going all same thing again. We're in designs. I clicked on the paintbrush, I'm going into create designs, clicking on social and hitting continue. So in terms of the just listed or just sold is, is the easiest one to always use is anytime you sell something, you definitely want to want to post about it and let people know you're doing business. Um, so if you just maybe choose a social square, you want to choose one of these templates. Like I said, don't fall in, in love with like the colors and all that. Think more of just the actual spaces and the lines that it, it's, it's looking like. So we have a lot of different ones. Uh, but pick one and use it over and over again and schedule those posts out so that if it closes on a Friday, that next Wednesday, this post goes out. It's not so important to get just, just solds out the day they happen, but utilize the system so that you make sure that it always happens. Um, and one of the coolest pieces of this, let's jump in there, is that the, there is an MLS that's connected into this system. And so we can pull a listing right into this photo. Um, if anybody, if anybody has a listing right now, you can put it in the chat, but we're going to pull up and put in a new photo here. And to get to that, uh, whole list of different homes, we just click on this KWLS option over on the left side, and we can pull in listings that are off market on market. They just have to have photos. Uh, in the listing. I haven't had much luck searching anything else but MLS number, listing address, one of those two. These other ones I have not had luck with uh, personally, but we can usually just search um, for an address. Let's see if I can just pull up an easy one, 10145 West. And I always make sure to put in the, the city and, and state because it searches MLSs across the nation. And so you're gonna see all kinds of uh, different listings in here if you don't put in the location of just state and a zip code would work as well. But these look okay, this will, this will do. And so you can see I have a listing here and I'm just gonna choose this third one by clicking on select. And then now I have options of 
utilizing any of the photos that are, are in the listing now. And so I can also take a look at the listing details, which is helpful for like street address. Um, you can sometimes templates have like beds, baths. You can look at all of that information in here. And so you can do, uh, you can see right now how much it's sold for. Let's see, it's sold for current price. Oh, that's wrong, definitely wrong. So this one doesn't have the correct current price, but we can see a, a bit of information, just general stuff you'd see in any part of the listing. You can grab the remarks in all of these. If I were to come in and we see street number and street name, I'll come up and find the address in here. There it is. And there's my little replace text wheel. So I can just click on that, extend it a bit and shift my design just so that those words come out. And I'm not afraid, a big fan of that piece there. So I'm just going to delete it and put in the address. So now let's switch out the photo. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'll, if I want to change a photo, I first click on the photo I want to change. And then I come over and hover over the photo I want to change it to. And then I click on the replace image where it's the two circles or two arrows in a circle. And sometimes it will show up a little bit blurry here. Give it a moment. It will usually clear up uh, if you give it a second. I don't really want that iRes uh, image in there. So I'm going to have to reposition this. So we'll click on reposition and just pull it up and just make it a little bit bigger there. Oh, looks like I'm going to catch part of it. All right, and click on done. And putting these on your social media pages is quick and easy. You saw how quickly you can do it when you have a newer listing, it's just as easy. It will be in there as soon as it's on market. And so you can grab those pictures. Um, let's see, let me just toss in a logo here. There we go. And again, you can change things like colors. If you want to add some, some different colors to this, we can come in and click on the different elements uh, inside here and, and start changing things around if, if you want to make it different. Really, the important part of all this is to keep it simple. Make sure that you do it. Consistency online is a lot more important than colors and, and some of those things until later. Right now, if you're just starting your business, if you're getting posts up three times a week, that should be your goal, even more possibly. But the more that, the more consistent you can be, the better. And so that goes as well with when I say use the same design every time. That's why it's consistency is part of this game with social media and using the same design helps train people that when they are looking at your images and they're associating that with real estate, it's all doing that work for you. And so keep it consistent and most importantly, keep it consistent in when that you're doing it regularly. All right. Now that was just a simple one. I wanted to show you guys a story post because I think that's one of the most missed opportunities by agents is not utilizing the stories as a way to uh, generate just interest leads into your web page. Your web page and your app are so important. They're going to become even more important over the next year to Keller Williams for the process of, or for the, the process, the part of the process where they're in between, between buying a home and when they sell it. That process is, is going to be really aided by your app. And the more people you have inside your app connected to your command, utilizing it, the better you're going to be able to serve your clients. And so when we talk about this today, we're going to be talking about your website. Just know that if you send somebody this on their phone, it's going to prompt them to download the app and look at it in the app. So it almost kind of does two birds with one stone where if somebody looks at it on their computer, it's going to look at what we see today on my screen. But if you send it to somebody's phone, it's going to actually send them to download the app. And so it's a cool way. We can also just grab your app link and, and put that into your stories. But linking your app or your web page into your stories is, is a, a great way to drive people to it so that they can see something and click on it. And I think 
some of you are coached by Eva Garcia, and I know you guys have been working on a lot of like neighborhood stuff. And so I wanted to show you how to make a neighborhood snapshot. That would be a great thing to share on your stories to something you could do every single week. And it's really easy to just change a little piece of it and then uh, change a little piece of it and reuse it, but with a different area because the areas that we look at are hyper-localized. They're, they're very tight-knit communities of what we see and the real estate that's happening there. So there are literally dozens and dozens of options for you to choose from. And so instead of going all the way back into command, I'm gonna just go right into templates and we're gonna take a look at the neighborhood snaps. And so down, at the, uh, down on the right side, we have our listings folder and we also have our lead generation folder. We have a buyer folder as well. Uh, there's some great stuff to look at in there. Some neighborhood snaps right here that you can see. Hope it's loading in all of our templates, social and print. And we're just gonna focus in on social stories right now. And so we have all these different neighborhood snap, uh, neighborhood snap templates. I wanted to look at these lead generation ones. These are also great ones. We have I heart KWs are really flashy and these are a little different, more Instagram uh, driven, but where is the one that I want? I like these client testimonial ones are handy to use if you're getting those, Ah, my KW app. So we have a bunch of different KW app um, images that we can use if we look at our social squares or uh, we have all kinds of different stuff you can use to drive content there. But let's go in and do a neighborhood snap. And we want to do a social story. So you may want to put up, you could do stories, they go away after a day. And so a lot of these, you can do a lot of them and, and really utilize this multiple times a week, especially if you're struggling to have content. If you're like, I don't know what to post. I want to post three times a week, Stephen, but I don't know what to post. Ah, uh, well, here's one solution to that problem. And we're gonna use, I like this template here. I like ones that have a picture as well um, because we have all those other pictures in there. It's, it's handy to have some of these. And I think I'm gonna do, let's do, will your next move be to Barton Hills? Let's use this one, the next move template. And we see a lot of the same things again. We have our DBA that we need to change, a photo that we can change, but now we have this new neighborhood snapshot, which it sure would be a lot of work to go in and find the average listing price here. Let's zoom into that so you guys can see the details. It'd be a lot of work to go in and find the average listing price, average sold price, total active, total pending, average days on market, average listing price per square foot. It'd be a lot of work to go in there and, and find that for a tiny little neighborhood inside of one of our MLSs. But good thing, it already is done for us inside the system. And so what all we have to do is if we wanna replace this snapshot is what this is, is we're gonna go back over to, K, to the KWLS. So over on the left side, after clicking on the Barton Hills snapshot, we're gonna click on KWLS. And instead of staying in the listings tab like we did before, we're gonna hop over to snapshots. And when we're in snapshots, we can uh, create a snapshot by neighborhood or by postal code. Like I said, the neighborhoods are very hyper-localized. They're small, they're small. And so you gotta be a little careful with those. If you want a bigger area, you can choose the postal codes, but I really like the neighborhood information. And we're gonna go with a place I used to live, Athmar Park, and same thing here. Let's make sure we put in a city and state here because it's a nationwide search. But that also tells you that you can do this for, you can create ones if you are from another area, you can create one for your hometown. You can create one for where you went to college and you still know people. So you might catch them as well because the app works just as well for them as it does for anybody in Colorado. All right. So we found Athmar Park. It's this first one up here. Of course, a bunch of different ones around there. Chaffee Park, Harvey Park, Lincoln Park, all of those come up. And we're just gonna click this little red arrow uh, next to Athmar Park. And you see it populates for us actually a few different snapshot sizes. So we have the map, we have the shorter uh, landscape version of it where it puts the information in slightly differently. And then we have the tall 
uh, story-like size. And so I'm gonna just click on the replace image option. Sometimes this does take a moment, but there it goes. Now we have all that information put in there for us, average listing, average sold, total active, total pending, all the info inside that in one click. Now, the only other piece I don't wanna uh, forget to change is we're not in Barton Hills. We wanna ask if they're going to move to Athmar Park. And one of the best tips I ever got for using this is you, you, you can try and click in here and triple click and delete this out, but you might end up moving it or changing the design. And so instead of trying to double or triple click, just click on the, the text you wanna edit. And then up at the top, right next to the font dropdown is this little tool called the typewriter. And when we click on that, it just pops up this little box so we can edit the text much easier. Mar. We hit save changes. Oops, I forgot a question mark. Okay. And now I'm just going to switch out the logo for my downtown logo and replace that there. And then I'm gonna find a more interesting picture as well. So I'm gonna click on the picture, come up to images, come over to the workspace tab. And then I'm gonna come down here and let's pick, what's a fun one? Let's do a neighborhoods one. This one will be probably good. And eh, I like this angle. And there we go. Oh, this is a little red for me as well. Let me change that to blue. Oh. Guess it didn't want to change it to blue. So one key tool I haven't talked about yet is if you ever mess up like I did, there is an undo button at the top. So we can just click on that. Mm -hmm. Let's click it one more time. It stretched my photo out and I don't like that. There we go. All right, so we have our story. Now, unfortunately, Command does not have a way to post to your story for your business through Command. You have to go into Facebook and do that. You have to go into Instagram and do that on, uh, on your own. I have heard that they are working towards building integration in for story posts as well as Instagram uh, posts for Instagram business pages. You have to be a business page um, from what I hear if that's going to be working out for us. And so you do have to bring this into your device. It is easiest to just download it when you're doing that. From here, you if you need to get it onto your cell phone, uh, Apple has a lot of really easy ways to make that happen between shared folders, or you can also send it through AirDrop, which is what I'll usually do is I'll just click on here, show in Finder, and then it brings that photo up. I right click and share. And here I can click on AirDrop, which then usually my cell phone shows up and I can easily just AirDrop the photo to my phone and I can then share it uh, through my apps on my phone, which make it really easy to share to your story. Now, the additional piece I wanted to show you guys on top of this that you can really add some lead gen to, to your post is just putting a little link in and just making it simple. Just copy the link and paste it into your post as a link. You can put H or URLs in there uh, when you're setting up your story post. I, I'm not going to show you guys all that uh, on the Zoom today, but I'm, I'm sure many of you are probably better at it than me. But if we do want to, if we do want to, uh, bring them in and show them actually what's going on in that neighborhood, we can show them the neighborhood page. And so you can see I'm here on my website and I'm just gonna type Athmar Park Denver right into the search bar. And you can see as I start typing, we get the option of neighborhoods and Athmar Park is one of our neighborhoods. And there it is, we can see it on the map. It gives us a brief summary on this page. And you could use this one. You could use this one. It has all the listings there, which I really like that it has the listings. But the page that I prefer to use when I'm when I'm doing this myself is I actually click on the neighborhood and go right to that neighborhood page. 
And so you can see at the top, it still keeps it on my website. It still says Delicios. If any leads come in from this, it still comes in to me. And by leads, I mean, if they scroll all the way to the bottom of this page, they're going to be, of course, met with a interested let's talk. So if somebody brings is on this page for my story and they fill this out, I'm going to get a notification and command for a new contact. And so there's all kinds of cool stuff on these pages that you might not have known about. Check this bottom piece out. It's all connected to Yelp. And so they get all of the like supermarkets, shopping, restaurants, everything that's in that neighborhood and even kind of around it, we can see. And so right now we're looking at highlights. We can come over and click on shopping. And then boom, there's all the shopping around. We can click on cafes, arts and entertainment. Super cool stuff for people to check out on our neighborhood pages. Schooling information. We keep going up. Transit and commute. Oh, this is one that I love this piece. If they click on uh, search for a place, they have to log in, but then they can save three addresses, uh, as, as many as three different addresses. So any listing they pull up, it'll tell them the commute time to that listing. So they can add their like kids daycare, their work and their mom's house in town. And then every time they pull up a listing, it'll tell them the commute time for those different addresses. But what you should like to hear is that they have to sign in to do this. And so that will drive people to actually sign in. And if you have clients, tell them to do this. Don't make it, you know, tell them, put their work address in, their wife's work in or their husband's work in. And so that they can see what's the commute time for each person and then put the kids school in or something like that. And you only get three right now, but get them to put three addresses in because when you're searching on the app, it does the same thing. Every listing you pull up on the app, then it tells you how far it is to those different addresses. So I I'm just absolutely love the you know, functionality that we have for our clients there. We have these what's local say that you can take what you will about those. This is my favorite one though that comes up. Uh, Athmar Park is 96% of people <laughs> like athleisure wear, which I think is the funniest word that's come out of the last like five years. All right, we have properties for sale so they can see them in there. All the different stats that they see on the photo we see repeated there as well. And then of course we have the map and kind of just a summary of the neighborhood. But I'll take this link right up here and that's the link that I'll put into my Facebook post or that's the link I'll put in my Facebook story. You might make a bit.ly, I'm not crazy about using bit.ly's. I don't mind long links, I just block it up and you know put some like, emojis and stuff around it. Be creative with these. Um, the more consistent you are with always having it in there, the more likely it is that somebody after seeing 10 of them over five weeks, you know, they finally click on one because it's a neighborhood that they used to live in or that they want to live in. That's really, it's just another, another little bit of bait to try and catch some more leads. All right. So website, um, just another note about neighborhoods and their names. Sometimes it is hard to just guess the name of a neighborhood. I live in a neighborhood that is called 20th and Kipling. And that's not the name of my neighborhood, but that's what it is called in, in the system. And 20th and Kipling <laughs> is because the names are generated through nextdoor.com and the uh, those are generated through the people that live there and at some point our neighborhood decided that's what we are in nextdoor.com and so that's what we are um but that's where the names come from so if you're ever struggling with the names of finding them just try and use utilize the map so if you just uh you know if i clear off the map from my search anytime you zoom in far enough you'll be able to click on those neighborhoods and it'll pop up just up at the top and then you can go into the system and Go to the KWLS, find your neighborhood in here after you found the proper name if you're struggling there. It doesn't happen all the time, especially if you do a lot of business within Denver. A lot of the like Denver metro area, a lot of the neighborhoods are, are well named and it's just subdivisions of subdivisions. But if you get up into the mountains and out west, they start to get a little bit more fast and loose. All right, so we have linked. We talked about holiday designs. We talked about the designs of the Facebook header. Are there any questions about stories, links, the snapshots, listings? Any questions about anything we went over today?
All right. Well, I appreciate you all rolling with me all the way to 301. I apologize for going over. But like I said before, this will be up on the YouTube. I appreciate you guys all being here. Thank you so much. There is an evaluation link that just got sent out to all of you. If you could all go in and make a quick eval, I'd appreciate that. Thank you all. I will see you all very soon. Awesome. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.